Do you know how many different models Audi will sell you? One, two, three, four, five, six, eight, nine, nine, ten, five, nine, nine, over 50. And that is the newest one. It's the Q2, and it's the new entry point into Audi's SUV range. It's based on the Audi A3 hatchback, but it's a little smaller than the A3 and a touch larger than the Nissan Duke. In fact, it's the Duke, the Mazda CX-3 and more premium SUVs like the BMW X1, which the Q2 can count as rivals in terms of size and badge appeal. Audi is trying to appeal to a younger audience with this car and it's doing it with a wide personalisation programme. So you can choose different types of wheels, there's a wide colour palette, you can even change the colour of the blades here and they even look a bit like the type you find on the Audi R8. Overall in terms of proportions it looks very much like a hatchback that's been pumped up a little bit and there's even a whiff of a coupe like an Audi TT for instance because look at that sloping roof line. And look at the size of that grille and the badge, leaving you in no doubt exactly who makes this car. Audi is trying to keep the young theme evident in here as well, so you can choose different colours for the seats, although not evident in this test car, and different dashboard inserts. Overall, the quality in here is very good. Some scratchy plastics here is a bit of a disappointment, but the dashboard layout is virtually identical to the Audi A3s. Older drivers will like the fact that you can easily get very comfortable. There's a fully height adjustable seat. The steering column is fully adjustable. And thanks to that higher ride height, it means getting into the car and out that little bit easier. Just like any other Audi, there are three trims to choose from. SE cars like this one come with 16-inch alloys, Apple CarPlay and Android Auto phone connectivity, as well as a 7-inch infotainment screen and pedestrian assist. Sport costs a reasonable £1,550 extra and comes with 17-inch wheels, body-coloured bumpers and silver side blades. S-Line adds extra luxuries like a sporty body kit and sport suspension. And just like any other Audi, there's lots of extra kit you can buy like blind spot monitoring and Audi's virtual cockpit that replaces the speedometer and other dials with a TFT screen. Storage wise, there's a decently sized glove box, a couple of cup holders, a good sized cubby under the armrest and door bins that pass the car by a big bottle test. Audi says there's more space back here than there is in an Audi A3, but I'm not quite so sure. For two people, it'll be fine. That seat is set up in my driving position. I'm just over five foot ten, and knee room is absolutely fine. But headroom, well, if you're close to six foot, then that's going to be a little bit tight. There's not a huge amount of space for three people. The middle passenger is going to feel very short changed because there's not a huge amount of shoulder room. There aren't any pockets on the back of the seats. There's not even an armrest. And despite there being easily accessible isofix points, I don't think families are going to much like putting their child seats in because due to this narrow door opening. It's a little bit disappointing from Audi, really. Audi haven't just focused all their attentions on the design of this car, they've also focused on the important things like practicality. If you lift the tailgate up on this car, now the overall boot volume is towards the top of the class. It's beaten just by the Renault Capture, but not by much. And overall, it's pretty good. The shape is square, there's not much of a lip at all. Under here, we haven't got a space saver spare wheel, but you can fit one. Let me just put the car by a suitcase in and you can see how much space we've got. Like I say, it's not massive. You can probably fit two of those in there, but for a car of this class, it's pretty good. You also get 60-40 folding rear seats and they're very easy to fold down. And when you fold them down, you've got a completely flat loading area. Just like the A3, the Q2 is available with a wide selection of engines. There's Audi's excellent new 113 brake horsepower 1 litre 3 cylinder turbo petrol and the 1.4 turbo with 148 brake horsepower and there'll also be a 2 litre turbo petrol arriving in 2017. In the diesel corner, there's a 148 brake horsepower 2 litre with two wheel drive or quattro four wheel drive. 
If you want something a little bit more economical compared to the 2 litre diesel, then you can go for the 1.6 diesel like we've got here. Now, you won't be getting anywhere near the claim 64 MPG that Audi claims, but you should be getting in the high 40s or even the low 50s, which is acceptable enough. Performance is adequate. There's 115 brake horsepower. And whilst this engine is not as smooth as the 2 litre diesel, it is generally quite refined. It's best matched with this slick six-speed manual gearbox. But of course, if you want an auto, Audi will sell you a six-speed S-Tronic Auto. Now, if you don't need a diesel, then I would recommend going for the 1.4 turbo petrol because it's quick, it's quiet, it's smooth, and it's just generally a nice engine and one that won't break the bank. Audi has fitted the same steering you'll find in the S3 hot hatchback, and it means the Q2 is surprisingly good fun to drive. It doesn't lean in corners too much, and it genuinely feels very stable and planted on the road. Ride comfort is not quite as good as you find on the Audi A3, but overall it handles the bumps very well. S-Line cars come with larger wheels and sport suspension, which do do their best to actually ruin the ride comfort. My recommendation would be, if you do want an S-Line car, then make sure you deselect the sport suspension and go for the standard setup. That way, you have the best of both worlds. The Q2 can also be fitted with lots of clever gizmos like park assist, adaptive cruise control, and the Q2 can even drive itself in traffic jams up to 40 miles an hour. But to get that kit, you're going to have to be prepared to open your wallet. Now, prices for the Q2 may well start at £22,000, but tick a few of those desirable options and you're probably going to be looking at something near £30,000. And I'm sorry, whatever way you look at it, thirty grand for a Q2 is an awful lot of money. Style and desirability cost a lot of money though, don't they? And there's no doubting the Q2 is a stylish and desirable car, one that's also practical and as well made as any other Audi. So if the Q2 has got you interested, you need to check out its rivals and you can do so by watching our reviews of the BMW X1 on the left or the Mercedes GLA on the right. Click at the top for our latest video and don't forget to hit subscribe.